Okay, so uh, now I'm going to talk about uh, LAP NC Linux. Uh, LAP in this context stands for Linux, Apache, uh, PostgreSQL, and PHP. It's like LAMP but with a different database. Uh, I've been told uh, after my last presentation about uh, security enhanced PostgreSQL, which is also why I filled in for uh, Kagai. I've been told that uh, PostgreSQL is really big in Japan and uh, has the same sort of uh, market share as uh, MySQL has in uh, Australia, for example. So uh, here, if you're talking about a, a database on Linux, you just think MySQL, and that's the one that's sort of got, got the, the mind share. Whereas in Japan, apparently, uh, PostgreSQL has a similar mind share. And also have a lot of uh, PostgreSQL developers there. Uh, so I imagine this is why Kai chose uh, PostgreSQL instead of MySQL for his work. Also, apparently, the, the architecture of PostgreSQL made it a little bit easier. Now, um, so the point of, of LAP AC Linux is to uh, extend AC Linux access controls right throughout the web stack. Oh, first of all, I'll just cover uh, Kagai's sort of uh, CV as he's uh, presented. Uh, he works for NEC, uh, based in, in uh, Tokyo. Uh, I met him in Tokyo when I was there a few years ago. Uh, he's working on, AC Linux, uh, working on Linux kernel for six years. Uh, one thing he's known for, one of his earlier AC Linux contributions was um, optimizing the, uh, the uh, Linux kernel code for work on large SMP boxes. So boxes with uh, 16 or 32 CPUs, uh, some issues where there could be uh, performance problems with SC Linux, and so he fixed those ones uh, a few years ago. Uh, another thing he's known for is uh, XADA support on the JFFS2 file system. That's a journaling flash file system uh, used in uh, uh, handheld devices, such as the uh, uh, HP uh, IPAC. Uh, this means that uh, SC Linux can, can be run on, uh, or one version of SC Linux can be run on such machines, whereas for a while uh, they couldn't be run because they use a file system that uh, SC Linux uh, didn't, didn't work with. And uh, the things known for uh, most of recent times is security enhanced PostgreSQL, which is uh, using implementing SC Linux access controls in the PostgreSQL database. So PostgreSQL is a trusted object manager. It has uh, Linux uh, security contexts labeling each row and column in every database. So when you create a database, there is a, a security context for the database. By default, uh, each table when you, that you create will have the same context as the database, and each row will have the same context as the, as the table. But you can, uh, when you uh, execute SQL commands to create uh, tables, columns, and rows, you can specify the security context if you wish, and have different labels on them. And also in SE PostgreSQL, you have um, uh, database functions that can run under di different privileges. So you can have a domain transition to run a, a function uh, with uh, different SE Linux privileges to access data that the user cannot normally access. Uh, an example that's given is uh, a function to uh, extract the last four digits or first four digits of a credit card number. Uh, so if you don't want to have the web app be able to get the full credit card details out of the database for security reasons, uh, you, you can give a summary so the web, web page can prompt the user, do you want to use your credit card that starts with the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4? And the, the uh, web app, if it was uh, compromised, couldn't get any more uh, detail than that. So the, the main uh, concept of uh, SC PostgreSQL is to have a, a system-wide uh, security model. So you have the SC Linux labeling of all data through the system, and uh, this means that it, uh, as well as controlling the file system and networking, you also control the, the database. Uh, prior to, to, the, to this, or systems without using uh, screen enhanced PostgreSQL, you can have two users who are isolated from each other uh, through file system interaction, through network interaction, network sockets, uh, through Unix domain sockets, but they can then just uh, share data via the PostgreSQL database, which uh, isn't what you want. So, if, uh, if, uh, so PostgreSQL can uh, look at the security context of the process that, that talks to it, via a Unix domain socket or a TCP socket. And uh, that context is, is used for their uh, uh, session in PostgreSQL. And uh, then AC Linux access controls uh, determine whether they can read each other's data or not. So there's, uh, I'm a little bit unsure about uh, the status of uh, AC PostgreSQL in the PostgreSQL 8.4 tree, whether it will go in or not. Uh, I believe the, the hope is that um, when uh, version 8.4 is released, there will be just a, a dot slash configure option to enable S Linux support. And so uh, you, the, the people who want it can have it, and uh, the default comp compiler would be to not uh, have it enabled. The uh, interesting thing is that 
PostgreSQL has a access control model that's uh, in, in concept very similar to the LSM model used in the Linux kernel. The LSM model is that uh, you have a set of uh, standard hooks for interfacing with various security mod modules, which uh, examples are, are SE Linux and uh, SMAC, and uh, AppArmor and Tomoe, Tomoe are other modules that uh, with some, some changes to uh, LSM will be hooked in. And now with a, a similar sort of interface in PostgreSQL, you could have the same systems being supported. So you could have uh, SMAC access controls and Tomoe access controls being used in a PostgreSQL database if that was, that was what you wished. And uh, I think this is, uh, this is a major feature to uh, help get uh, SE PostgreSQL included in, in, the, in the PostgreSQL database. Because I think uh, if we were trying to uh, convince the, the core developers of PostgreSQL to have only SE Linux features, I think it would be a, a hard sell. But saying to them, okay, we want to have an, an interface that allows SE Linux, AppArmor, uh, SMAC, Tomoyo, whatever else you can imagine to be supported, I think it would be a much easier thing to uh, convince them. And hopefully we'll get the, the uh, access control uh, environment in there and uh, AC Linux uh, in there as well. One thing to note about the, the uh, AC PostgreSQL implementation is that it's a strictly a compile time option. So there is no support for uh, loading a shared object with access control uh, features. Uh, AC Linux uh, integration to PostgreSQL is at a very um, uh, low level in terms of the, the database code. So it's right throughout the code at several different points. So it's not a, a trivial thing to add it in, and not something that can be easily replaced with another module at uh, runtime. Part time, it's uh, apparently fairly easy uh, with uh, C macros for it. Now, there's apparently uh, screen enhanced PostgreSQL packages for Fedora 8 and better. I've got a, a demonstration machine running uh, Fedora 10. Oh, one thing I should mention uh, before I move on is that. Uh, the uh, uh, Ministry of the Japanese Government has uh, funded some of uh, Kaigai's work. Uh, he's uh, been awarded the title of uh, Genius Programmer by that uh, government department for his work on Security Enhanced PostgreSQL. So it's an official recognition by, by the Japanese government of the, his good work. Now, some frequently asked questions. So, um, SE PostgreSQL is not uh, designed to have uh, separate virtual databases and it's not designed to have um, anything equivalent to uh, the polling polyin sensitive directories feature, also known as the namespaces feature we, we're uh, familiar with now in, in file system access. So what it is, you have two users accessing the same database if they have the privilege to access it, and they can have uh, row labeling to determine which user can read which row. And if a user isn't permitted to read some rows, then uh, a select statement will just have less results in it. Of course, you could have two different databases with different labels on the entire database, which means that uh, some users couldn't see another database. That's uh, a legitimate option, too. Yep. So you have uh, user A gets to read row one, and user B gets to read row two, and user C gets to read both rows. Now, well, if, you know, what you're probably wondering is, uh, what if I have a, um, uh, a primary key, and uh, I try to insert in the database, and uh, its primary key matches a row that I'm not permitted to read? Well, you just get a, the same result as you would get uh, if you could see the, the row and uh, try to insert a, a conflicting row, which so it would fail. And, um, uh, of course, this means you, you can guess what the primary key is. And the, 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 well, the obvious thing is, don't make a primary key be secret data. So if a primary key is an index number, you can know that okay, index 3 has been taken by someone, I don't know who because I'm not permitted to see it. If your index key is uh, someone's password, well, that would be a bad idea. For many reasons, apart from that one. So now this is the current, uh, graphic, current state of play. We've got uh, SE Linux in the operating system and in the database, uh, labeling data uh, all the way. Uh, so this is based on both the domain type model and uh, uh, through uh, MLS or MCS. Uh, currently in, in the demonstration environments uh, that uh, we've got for uh, Security Enhanced PostgreSQL, they're using uh, MCS to uh, separate the data for demonstrations, but you can use any combination of MCS and, um, or, or MLS, depending on your policy, 
and uh, domain type. Now, uh, so we, in case, case where we have a, a web server. So we have a web server here, it's getting uh, connections from the outside world from, and from two different departments within a, a corporation. Uh, maybe hypothetical, maybe a, a real case people are doing this. So uh, we'd like to separate the access from these three different uh, classes of user. We don't want uh, the, the uh, external users to get the level of access that someone who's uh, in the human resources department uh, gets. So uh, we can have, uh, we have uh, labeled networking configured and uh, uh, connections from uh, unprivileged machines such as the, the outside internet uh, will get uh, assigned a security context that matches the, their use. And you want to assign security contacts for uh, different IP address ranges used by different departments. And then uh, Apache will uh, uh, recognize this and launch uh, child processes uh, to serve or worker threads for Apache uh, with a security context uh, that is derived from the security context of the incoming data. And then that uh, context of the, the Apache process will then determine, uh, uh, will then be passed on to, to PostgreSQL because it makes the, the database connection, uh, that the security context is, is passed through. And then PostgreSQL will decide which data to return based on that security context. So then uh, via AC-Linux uh, X controls, the, uh, in this case, uh, IP address ranges will determine uh, which rows in the PostgreSQL table will be returned from a select uh, query. Do you have any questions at this stage? Am I confusing people or are you sort of understanding it? Okay, that's good to hear. Okay, uh, so the issues of web applications. So it's suggesting that 95% uh, of uh, modern uh, attacks uh, are based on web applications, which is an interesting number. And 76% uh, of uh, attacks try SQL injection. So obviously we've got some uh, problem, serious problems with, with web applications and with SQL in particular. And so the idea is that uh, Having SE Linux implemented in Apache and right throughout the, the, the uh, lap stack and uh, in PostgreSQL at the back end will protect us from these type of attacks to a large degree. So, can SE Linux provide a solution? Yes, we can. <laughs> okay, so issues to be considered. Um, You've got um, uh, a more integrated web application, and in, in the traditional, uh, the older SE Linux model, you only had one security context uh, per process, uh, and you couldn't change that. Uh, one of Kaido's uh, recent uh, uh, patches that, uh, I'm not sure the status of it, uh, perhaps you could mention the status of that patch. His, uh, one of his ideas is to um, uh, allow a thread to, to uh, uh, change its security context uh, without changing the context of the entire process. James, can you comment on the, the status of that? Or would you like to comment? Yeah, it's really upstream. Okay, upstream. It's, okay. It's a subset. Okay. So can't the Okay. Okay. I thought this would be really controversial and take ages of debate first. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, that's. Subset. Yeah. Okay. Well, what's that next? Okay, I'll skip this one. So, so as uh, James mentioned a second ago, uh, we, we are, uh, there's a patch that's been just gone upstream to, to uh, allow each thread to have separate uh, contexts, uh, which is in some ways analogous to the uh, set FS UID system called for, for uh, traditional Unix missions. Uh, the reason this got through is because uh, there's a method to uh, allow the uh, uh, transition to, to be only to a, a security context to the subset of the access. So we can only uh, reduce privileges, not increase them. And uh, the, uh, so it's in, the, it's in the policy language, the policy compiler that, that uh, enforces this, is it? Yeah, it's checked, it's checked in the code of the policy. Okay. 
Okay. So when you, when the, in the policy, uh, the binary policy modules that are produced uh, by the um, check policy program, when they're uh, loaded into the kernel, the kernel will then check on, uh, whether a domain is uh, a, a strict subset of the access, and if so, then it's a, a candidate for such a tra transition. So here's an example of uh, two different uh, requests uh, from different users with different security contexts, going to the web server and then going to different web applications uh, that we run in, in different domains. So in this example, we have two different uh, Apache child processes servicing different requests, and these Apache child processes have limited access to talk to each other or to shared resources. And, uh, and this is part of uh, the ongoing work to, to extend the, the ability of AC Linux to control access to, to resources throughout the whole stack. So another uh, uh, similar uh, project that's currently uh, in progress is uh, the X Windows uh, access controls. And so that means that you can have uh, AC Linux controls at the desktop environment and have different uh, windows in your desktop having different security contexts. And so therefore, uh, it would be quite possible to have two different windows on your desktop, run by different programs with different security contexts, uh, talking to the same web server, have different uh, Apache processes on the web server running different security contexts based on the context of the client, and then different uh, security contexts used for the connections to the PostgreSQL database, and need different data. So you have two windows on your desktop getting different uh, data from the database because uh, the programs that run them, have, or the controllers windows, have different security contexts. And have, have uh, Ethernet control and the XX controls so those programs can't, uh, you can't have uh, cut and paste data between them, for example. Now, uh, one of the uh, building blocks of this is labeled networking technology. Uh, I mentioned previously that uh, we can assign security context to uh, IP addresses or IP address ranges, but that's obviously uh, not enough for some of these things. If you want to have uh, different uh, security, different programs, different security contexts on the same desktop, you just have labeled networking and have uh, the packets from these programs uh, have uh, network labels uh, as appropriate. So uh, uh, James here is in the, in the third row, uh, does some of the work, I believe, on uh, labeled networking in terms of, of uh, the kernel code. Uh, is, is, is that correct, James? Yeah, Paul is from HP. Yep, but he's not here, so I'll, I'll refer to you as the expert. Uh, so anyone who has any hard questions about that, ask James afterwards. Um, so basically the concept is we, we use IPsec uh, to, to uh, encrypt the, the packets and prevent modification. And uh, there's a, a header in the IPsec uh, packet which contains the uh, SLN security context of the process. No? Okay. Uh, it's in the security associations Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, you need to know the IPsec. Okay. Yeah, you, you wouldn't change IPsec. <coughs> Okay. 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 So, so, okay. Could you give a, a brief 30 second summary of uh, how it works? Okay. So, the labeled networking Linux supports two types. One is to actually attach a security label to each packet, and that's done in with an IP option. Yeah, it's called SIPSO, but it extends SIPSO um, to be able to support sort of arbitrary SC Linux labels. Um, and yeah, it's based on an old old internet standard that got dropped, but nonetheless implemented. Um, and that apparently there are um, SE Linux systems that can talk to trusted Solara systems over the network using this labelled networking stuff, uh, which I've heard of, I haven't seen. And the other mechanism is um, labelled IPsec, and IPsec works by uh, having these things called security associations which um, define um, a destination IP address uh, protocol and what's the other, I can't think off the top of my head, but anyway, each, each IPsec connection uh, is associated between uh, two endpoints and this is negotiated uh, by the uh, IPsec demons when you start up and the la security labeling works by uh, applying security labels to the um, security association so then uh, there's no, no labels actually needed to flow with the packets. If, it, if um, a packet arrives, an encrypted packet on this particular security association, um, you, you infer the label because it came across on that 
Um, so if people know IPsec, they'll know about the security policy database and the security association database. It's just storing an extra attribute there. So this is it's a fairly complicated thing at the moment. So, so if I have uh, two clients running at different levels, does that mean two different uh, IPsec connections? Uh, yes, it does. Okay. Thanks for that. Okay. 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 Thanks. We should probably have a buff on IPsec later on. Okay, so here's a diagram of some of the ways of assigning security context uh, through SC Linux. So you have a, a uh, if you log in via SSHD or, or uh, login D, uh, you authenticate and the, uh, uh, either, the, either the daemon itself in the case of SHD or, or uh, PAM in the case of uh, login D will determine the correct security context uh, to be assigned to, to the trial process. And uh, then you'll have a shell running with the appropriate context. Uh, or here's a diagram about the IPsec. And so you have uh, the, the raccoon daemons on the uh, various machines establishing the labeled IPsec connection and uh, giving the uh, uh, correct uh, security context assigned to, to the, the TCP connections. And that means that when the database server, uh, PostgreSQL in this case, uh, receives connection, you'll be able to uh, determine the uh, context of the, of the peer and uh, uh, grant access to the database accordingly. And to the diary of the Apache, server, uh, Apache process, it has a request handler processes which it launches under different, uh, with different contexts. And uh, they can then run web applications, have a, uh, connection databases, et cetera, and uh, have s access controls on all of that. So this controls access to uh, basic resources like files on disk, as well as uh, passing the, the security context to uh, other connections, such as to other databases, to uh, servers like Tomcat, et cetera, or whatever else you might be doing. So the, the basic idea is to have the, the entire web application stack running under SCX control uh, right from the top to the bottom and have the uh, derived context of the user's uh, context being passed through. This doesn't mean we use the same context, of course, because uh, you have a, a context assigned to, to the, the TCP connection that comes into the, to the Apache. The uh, context used for the Apache uh, server process will be derived from that, so it won't be the, usually won't be the same. Although uh, you, I think we use, usually have the same uh, MCS or MCS uh, sensitivity label. Uh, and then uh, the context uh, uh, used for the, uh, and that will be the context then used for connection to the, to the database. And then if you have uh, other things such as a, a uh, Tomcat server process, you could have several Tomcat servers running with different security contexts to serve connections uh, from different uh, Apache uh, worker threads based on their security context. And I mentioned before that the, uh, initially uh, SC Linux didn't support this. The early version of SC Linux had a, a design uh, feature of uh, not allowing a process to change its security context at all. And it's only in more recent times that, that uh, it's been the, given the ability to change uh, security context uh, at, at runtime. The reason for not changing it uh, at uh, runtime is that there was two reasons. One is if a program has accessed some secret data, you don't want to uh, allow it to uh, change to a context that allows uh, writing to more files, so they therefore write this secret data to some inappropriate place. Uh, or uh, uh, changing context to allow uh, interactions with hostile processes that may exploit it and try and access the secret data. Uh, also, um, if a process is running uh, with low integrity data, then you don't want to uh, allow it to potentially have its uh, state be compromised and then uh, change into a security context to allow uh, operations that require more integrity being to, be to be run, such as say, uh, writing to the shadow password file, and then have a corrupted state be used to uh, exploit the system and uh, overwrite the data. But uh, the, the recent change of allowing uh, a thread to be run with a, a, um, 
a subset of the, the access uh, addresses the, these issues. Uh, and access in this context also means the ability to be uh, interfered with by the processes. So the, the term bounds domain is used for, for these uh, uh, super domains that uh, restrict the access. So the main Apache uh, domain can be a, a bounds domain and uh, uh, it can launch uh, child uh, processes with, with different child threads with different domains that are, have a subset of that access, which is checked by, by the kernel uh, when policy is loaded. Uh, and also uh, when you're compiling the policy, you have to uh, uh, take appropriate steps to make sure that it is actually a, a, um, a subset. Although, James, does the uh, policy compiler uh, verify this? As far as I know, it checks it. Okay. Oh, good. Yes, the policy compiler uh, verifies this. So it should be impossible to, to uh, create policy that uh, violates this. But if it does, then the kernel will uh, sort it out. So this is a, a diagram of uh, how the domain transitions occur. So we have a SSH login. SSHD can launch uh, separate processes under, under user T and, and staff T. And these are uh, child processes, uh, a different process. So you have SSHD uh, executing the, the shell, like, uh, such as bash, uh, which is a traditional model of SCLinux operation for changing security contexts. In this example over here, you have a HTTPD underscore T launching a thread with HTTPD underscore staff underscore T, which is a, a new thing. Uh, previously, that, that uh, functionality hadn't been supported. Uh, in, in the past, uh, I, I considered uh, modifying Apache to, to work with the older model, that is, uh, uh, executing a, a new copy of itself and with a different security context. But that was uh, unwieldy and doesn't really work with the way Apache is designed. So uh, I never really got anywhere with that. And this new uh, change to the way uh, uh, security context can be assigned to threads really makes it a lot easier. So now the uh, Kagai is uh, using the term uh, Apache SC Linux Plus to refer to this uh, Apache stack with SC Linux uh, all the way through it. As an extension to the Apache uh, web server. And it can uh, assign, also assign the security context based around HTTP authentication. So I've got a demo machine which I'll try and get going uh, when I finish the main talk which uh, shows how to uh, use this, how you, get a, a, you can log in via HTTP and then get a security context assigned to your session, which means uh, assigned to the uh, worker uh, thread based on your, your uh, login. And this means that uh, unless uh, an attacker uh, compromises the, the uh, actual Apache process itself before it changes the context, uh, if they compromise uh, scripts that are run uh, by the web server, like say PHP scripts, uh, there's a limit to, what they can, to the damage they can do. So here's an example, this diagram of how the uh, Apache works. Uh, when you get a, a, a HTTP re request, you read the header, you make a, a one-time thread. Uh, the thread then assigns the context to itself. Uh, then does all the work of satisfying the request, that is uh, reading files from disk, uh, running PHP code, talking to databases, whatever else is involved. Then when it uh, exits, you have a, a, the, uh, the main Apache thread, which was waiting, which had launched it. Uh, receives the notice of its completion to uh, terminate the, the, the request. Okay, so demonstration time. First, do we have any, any questions? No? Okay. Well, I'll just finish the last slide before, before uh, we go to the demonstration. So uh, the past uh, situation was having SE Linux only at the OS level. Today, uh, with uh, Kaga's latest work, we have uh, the SE Linux the operating system and the database. And the future is to have it uh, going all the way up the stack to uh, PHP and, and Tomcat. Okay, Casey, can I plug my laptop into yours? So, what are you looking for? Um, no, uh, Ethernet connection. Uh, your machine being a. In a are you you got gigabit networking? Uh, Presumably yeah. you do, it's a new one. <coughs> okay, what's your IP address? I have no idea. Oh, uh, let's see here. Um, oh, 
that's going to be looking for DHP. Oh, no, I'll just sign it. Say what? I'll just I'll sign one. Okay. So, uh, to make EH1 uh, 10 zero, zero, 002. So, if you use 10 zero, zero, 001. Okay, nobody look. Okay. Oh, you're using Windows. It's a wonderful display environment. And it runs VMware very well, thank you very much. Huh? Yes. Okay. You got Smack working on it? Say what? You got Smack working on it yet? I've got three Smack machines running. Yeah, this is a joke, it's okay. Oh, it's okay. Yeah, no. no, but SC Linux works great. <laughs> Okay. Um, one of the disadvantages, I didn't see, Russell sprung this on me, I didn't realize he was going to want me to actually change my network topology on the fly. Well, actually, if you if you use a, the DHCP assigned address, um, I could probably get that working too. Oh, well, let's, let's see if I can find it. Yeah. Well, this is a switch that's being used as part of the conference Wi-Fi installation, so we can't really mess it up or anything. But he does supply the DHCP. If this is too hard, I just sort of, I just finish up with a demonstration of uh, SE PostgreSQL instead. Talk, talk for a minute here. I should be able to get it. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, while we're waiting for, for this, uh, do we have any more questions? None at all. Yep. The, the future part of Tomcat and other application layers. What's the time frame for that? Have we got any ideas? Okay, uh, that's a good question. Um, it really, to, to a large extent, this, this depends on uh, upstream acceptance, uh, which uh, is determined by how the ideas of upstream developers match with uh, those of SELINX developers. Um, I, I believe that there's, uh, things are going reasonably smoothly in terms of, of PostgreSQL. It doesn't mean it's going to happen really soon, but uh, no one's saying that they uh, really don't like the idea. And uh, the, the fact that there's a lot of generic code there that will help other systems as well, I think, is a very positive thing. So I think that PostgreSQL, that should happen you know, soon-ish. Um, Tomcat, uh, there's nothing really required there. Uh, the, the, the way Tomcat works is it's uh, not uncommon at all to have more than one instance of Tomcat, so you, uh, for various reasons. So you, you have two different, having two different instances of Tomcat running different Unix UIDs is a fairly standard practice. And have them on different uh, SLMs connects as well. well that's just uh, a trivial thing. So once we, uh, so then there's Apache. Um, Apache is a very uh, modular server, and there's a lot of people doing a lot of things that I think the upstream developers don't expect with it. So there's a, a long tradition of having uh, Apache modified to, to do your own extra uh, functionality. Uh, getting uh, this link support uh, upstream in Apache, that, uh, that could be a real challenge. I don't know how much work's involved there. Getting it, getting it in uh, packages from some of the distributions, like some of it, say the, the uh, Debian or, or Red Hat one, that's something that could be a little bit easier. Um, James, do you have any, any idea what would be required to get uh, the Enterprise Linux uh, Apache to include this? I don't. I actually don't know. Sure. Okay. No problems. Yeah. Or oh, Fedora. How hard would it be? If it's 
it's upstream, it'll, it'll be in there. Yeah, well, that's the problem. Uh, I, I think that it could be quite a while before this gets upstream in, in Apache. So uh, uh, I think we, we would have to try and get it uh, included in the distribution packages first. Well, it's not upstream. It may not be uh, yeah. No? Okay. It knows, it knows things too No, get it upstream. Okay. Well, let's plug the video in yeah. back here. Okay. I'll do a PostgreSQL demonstration instead. Okay, do that. Okay, so I've got two different logins with different uh, contexts. The uh, important thing to note is the uh, sensitivity label at the end, which in this case is S0 colon C1, and in this case is uh, S0 colon C2. So I'm the PostgreSQL client. Okay, so we execute the same command in both sessions. Uh, select security context, so security label, comma star from drink. Uh, security label is a, uh, uh, I think we call it a, a hidden column. It, it doesn't uh, uh, get, get returned if you do a select star. So we have to select security label, uh, comma star to, to get it. And it shows the uh, labels in the rows. So as you can see, we've got the, some of the labels in the rows. Um, now this uh, context, th this session is uh, running at uh, level S0, colon C2. So you can read uh, that level and, and below. So uh, S0 on its own, without the category C2, is a, a, a lower level, and it can be read. And this other session is at C1. And as you see, we have different uh, data being returned. So this session gets uh, entries for juice, soda, and tea, whereas this one gets wine and curry. Yeah, beer with curry. Oh, this is, yeah, well, even more interesting, this is a, a, a table of drinks, and curry is a drink, it seems. Yep, question? Can you multiple labels in the same row? No. So you have to insert the row multiple times between labels. If I want one, you're doing C1, C2, C3, C99. That's incredible. I have to basically have 100. Um, okay. So, so you want to have it uh, being read by all of those uh, categories? Okay. Um, so, uh, okay. So, to, so, okay. So, we say we want to have um, out of uh, uh, so we want to have uh, what C zero, C one, uh, sipping C two, C three, and then uh, C four to one to C ninety nine. So, okay. 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 So, we want to have ninety eight out of the first one hundred uh, categories be able to see it. So, that means uh, a user with uh, level S zero colon C one can see it. Uh, but with uh, or, or with S uh, zero colon uh, C zero. Okay. Um, in the MCS policy, uh, that would actually require uh, it be uh, inserted multiple times. Uh, with um, he wants those ones not see it. Like those, those categories, you can have multiple categories. Yeah, 
yeah. But he, he wants a user who only has category 1 to see it, and a user who only has category 2 to see it, but a user who, who has, category, uh, has no categories not see it. No. He's not asking for a normal case, he's asking for an extreme corner case. So that is um, uh, a user who has only category C1 can see it, and separately, a user who only has category C2 can see it. And yeah, that, that, that would uh, not work so well. So in that case, yeah, so in that case, now what you want to do is have the, the domain type model be used. So you create a, a, a new type for your um, uh, uh, row, and you, you have uh, the user who can see this being in a domain that can access the, uh, uh, rows of that type. So it's the same as units, groups, and users, users, users. No, it's not the same as groups and users. But no. um, only in the vaguest way. Um, there, there are several uh, critical differences. Like one is that uh, you can have supplementary groups, whereas with, with uh, in SQLinux, uh, Linux, every object only has one security context at a time. And uh, there is, I mean, this, this corner case I've just described of having Apache, having worker threads with a different security context. That's the unusual corner case. And even so, each thread only has one security context. And you can't have a thread with more than one context. You, you can't have a, a uh, process, you, you can't have a file or a row or anything that has more than one context. And so the only way to do it is by security or by <coughs> I'm sorry? S0 is, um, it, 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 or S0 it, on its own, is, the, the, is equivalent to what we call system low. And it means that everyone can read it. And so uh, if data uh, is suitable to be read by everyone, then you label it S0. As you can see for water and coke in this example, in that case, uh, no matter what your context is, you can read it. As in uh, the, the um, yeah, uh, no, no, it's not at that stage yet. Uh, first, you know, get it upstream, uh, then get it uh, while you're using tested. Uh, then uh, there's the issue of uh, who's going to get it evaluated, and yeah, there's a lot of money involved. Um, so we, we had AC Linux be, uh, we had uh, uh, instances or configurations of uh, Red Enterprise Linux running AC Linux be evaluated. But um, there was a, a, you know, it's, it's a big project for do, doing that. And I believe that uh, is, is, is still only HP and IBM that, that, that have done that? Uh, evaluating SE Linux. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but the, the, the EAL level isn't the, isn't the thing that matters. The, the thing that matters is the protection profile that they're evaluating against. So uh, SE Linux has uh, passed the uh, LSPP, Level of Security Protection Profile, which is a really hard one to do and a lot of work. Uh, what level, what EAL number to get for LSPP? Four. Four. Okay, that, that's really hard. But uh, some of the other ones, uh, like, like um, uh, the, the role-based uh, protection profile, they're a lot easier. And uh, having a four plus on those ones doesn't really mean nearly as much. Not that you actually want to use an LSPP uh, configuration for uh, anything except perhaps uh, some military environments. Uh, but uh, this is what the certification is about, just uh, certifying to do uh, some very difficult things and then making it sound good to so people who want, want to buy it. And back to certification of PostgreSQL. Uh, I can't imagine that Oracle would certify that. And uh, even for uh, an SGI, I think it's going to be certifying things for, for a while. I think they're sort of uh, taking on new products at this stage. Uh, so it's HP and IBM who, who are the possibilities. And if they uh, see a business need for you know, serious, significant uh, PostgreSQL uh, installations at uh, military customers, then they, they could possibly do that. But I think it's still a lot of money. So I think the, 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 the main uh, people interested in doing this will be um, commercial organizations uh, who want to use the MCS policy, not the MLS policy. And uh, basically, just uh, want to have their own web servers be uh, more secure. And uh, also, I expect in some situations, they'd want to uh, have, situa have cases where they have several discrete servers installed and say, okay, instead of having different servers, we'll have just one server doing this uh, work and have SQLinux use to separate the data to save ourselves some, some money on hardware. 
because uh, now it seems to be a time for uh, saving money on hardware. Yeah, so, well... Okay. Um, uh, in, in the... Uh, yeah, in the, in the, in the uh, sensitivity label, sensitivity label is um, the fourth part of security context, this part here. So the first part here is the SE Linux uh, identity. Uh, the second part is the role, which uh, at this time and for all of the last eight years has always been object underscore R for files and other resources process access. So currently the role is only used for the, the process, uh, processes and for proc entries for processes. Uh, here we have uh, the, the uh, type, so it's SEPGSQL fixed table T. And this last section is the sensitivity label. And of the, the uh, label, the first part is the sensitivity level, which in the case of the MTS policy is always S0, because we actually don't use the sensitivity label. But we, because we can't actually remove it, we just have to uh, set it to be always zero. Uh, in the default MLS, which stands for Mortal Level Security Policy, uh, we have uh, 16 levels from zero to 15. And this is the uh, category, which is uh, in this case only C2. And uh, in MLS, to be able to read a, uh, a resource, you must have a, a uh, level that is equal or greater and a set of uh, categories that is a, a superset of the categories of the object you're reading. For MCS, you just have, have categories that, set that is a superset. And that's the best I can do in less than an hour of talking about the topic. Now I'll give another quick demo. So I've just um, tried to select star from customer, and it gives me a, an SD Linux access control uh, method. At this stage, uh, the, uh, there is a, an, a, a, a boolean to determine whether this, uh, whether this ABC message is displayed to both the uh, requesting user and logged in the system log, or whether it has neither. Uh, the next train, a, a trained uh, plan for the near future is to uh, enable this to be configured separately. So you want to uh, have the option of turning this off for the user, so the user doesn't know why the query failed, because you want to be able to be probing your database and find out why things aren't, aren't working, uh, and, uh, but also logging it to the uh, system log. And so this is, the problem here is um, that this access to the name of tables, customer.credit. So uh, I just uh, selected something which would, have, uh, got the, which would have involved reading the credit card number uh, of the customer, which uh, is inappropriate for this, uh, the comics being used. So there is a, a way of doing this. Ah, show credit. Okay, now show credit is a PostgreSQL function. Uh, when this is ex the type of, of this function indicates to SE Linux that there should be a, a domain transition performed. So this function transitions uh, within, the, within the PostgreSQL access control scheme to a security context, which allows it to read the credit card uh, column fr from that uh, table. You read the column, it will return the uh, first four digits and have the rest of it uh, be blanked out. So here we have, uh, so we have the, the customer name, customer ID number, and uh, the first four digits of the, the credit information. So that means that, that uh, the security context of my session that's used for connection to the PostgreSQL database is only permitted to see four digits of the credit card number. So this can be used for web application. Uh, it says, you know, do you want to use your credit card with number starting with 1111? And uh, the uh, web can do this, but it can't actually get the whole data and therefore uh, can't find inf information to be uh, useful for some reading fraud. And I think we're a bit out of time, so I'll make it my last demonstration. Do you have any questions before I pack up? No? Okay, thank you for your time.